Here in the West, there have historically been very obvious separation between male and female spaces, such that a woman who doesn't want to be around men doesn't have to, especially when it's an intimate place, you know, a bathroom, a locker room, that kind of thing. She doesn't have to be around men unless she chooses to. And that's because we actually care about sexual assault and we don't really have a rape culture. Right? But now you see this starting to change, of course, due to the transgender fad and that kind of undermining these uh, safer spaces that have been created specifically in a more chivalrous age to make sure that women both feel and are safer. But one of the, I think, more overlooked parts of this whole saga is the way that women prisoners are treated, women inmates if you prefer the term. So inside of prisons now, there's an increase in men being placed in female prisons because they want to be there. Now officially they're claiming that they are women, but really what guy wouldn't want to be just placed in the female prison? It's safer for him there than it would be in an all-male prison, which is the natural alternative. And so what's being described are actually not even like the, the regular uh, trans, but uh, in many of these cases you see men who haven't even done the the work to put makeup on, to go on the hormones, none of that. They're not even dressing as women, they're just claiming that they are women and then they're being housed with women and some of these are particularly violent individuals. And inside of those prisons, uh, you have women at their most vulnerable uh, because they're completely disarmed, the entire environment is the entire environment is sort of meant to be uh, somewhat um, well, it, it places a person at vulnerability when they're not in control of where they're going to be, what they can do, what items they can possess, all of these things contribute to vulnerability, right? So let's take a look at this article that I stumbled across, which is the reason that uh, I'm talking to you about this today. So it says, ex-prisoner was shaking with fear while sharing shower block with violent trans inmates at S Scott's prison, or in other words, in a Scottish prison. And she Amanda, that's a real woman, revealed she was so terrified of being raped and ending up pregnant that she felt compelled to have a contraceptive coil fitted while behind bars. That is because she is an actual woman and thus a rape of her could lead to pregnancy. Um, unlike a rape of a man. Because there are differences between men and women. I, I mean, I realize it may sound like I'm being redundant, but this is these are things that nowadays are overlooked and are just not seen because of our our subjectivist age that fails to see like reason that fails to be able to assert a is a woman is woman you know so uh, she, she basically lived in constant fear while she was there to a degree that is not normal I mean in general you would expect a prison environment to not be particularly comfortable and to result in some fear but a person shouldn't be afraid of constant sexual assault uh, by men. She was housed with two um, two trans men, or, or trans women, it depends on how you want to use the terminology, two men who pretended to be women. Uh, one of them was serving time for murder. He, she says, one of them was a domestic abuser who was over six feet tall and extremely threatening looking. The other was serving time for murder. Now, just to slow down here, the fact that one was over six feet tall isn't that abnormal for a man. But for a woman, it's highly, you know, unusual because we're built differently, right? And this is the kind of thing, yes, there are averages and there are, there are those who uh, are outside of the rule. But in general, you know, a guy over six feet tall is not that abnormal. A guy who's particularly bulky, significantly stronger than a woman, also not abnormal. And even a guy who's skinny is still going to be stronger than the vast majority of women because there are differences. So she was housed um, with somebody who had committed assaults against women and another one who had murdered someone. So it's no wonder that she was um, kept in a state of fear. And this whole thing is is evil, but so few are willing to say it. So, willing, so few are willing to say we shouldn't put, you know, women in cages with violent men. Why is that a controversial statement? I have no idea. I struggle to even reason why that would be a controversial statement. 
She said, we were told his name was Laura and that we would need to call him by that name while the murderer was called Alex. I felt like if I was to misgender them, it would be me who would be getting into trouble and possibly having my sentence lengthened. This is the environment in which she, she was living, which they were all living. We didn't have showers in our cells and so we had to shower in the communal sh shower block so women who were traumatized and vulnerable had to be naked and shower with men in their spaces now we're told that this will never happen would never happen that you, that you wouldn't have that in locker rooms remember this is one of the arguments in regards to you know uh w with children in schools that those of us who are defending locker rooms for women being only for women for girls uh, we were talking about this sort of exposure that would have to take place in front of the boy who was pretending to be a girl, or who claimed to be a girl. And those on the other side, so this would never happen, this scenario would never actually happen. But in fact, right here in the prisons, you see, not only is it happening, but they don't have a way out. They can't just not shower. They're, they're there in a prison for months at a time or years at a time. Uh, they don't have the options, they can't go somewhere else to shower, these options aren't available to them, and again, these are things that make them uh, most vulnerable, and yet all of this is just ignored. Let's continue, alright? And then she goes, I know some female prisoners decided not to shower at all as a result because they feared they would be raped or assaulted. So, see, I think that these countries, Scotland included, um, we, we kind of have these we, we, we kind of say that we're not going to torture people. That's, that's one of our things. But you're keeping a person in a constant state that they're going to be like uh, raped and, and we're making that possibility likely um, kind of does uh, reach that point of, of mentally torturing a person. The whole thing is evil and so few people are, are willing to say this obvious truth. You, you cannot and should not keep people in these positions. It's evil and and one of the things that drives me crazy is that it's said as if there's like a, a moral impetus to it, as if it is somehow more moral to do this than, than the alternative because the, the trans inmate is at some kind of risk at an all-male prison. It's like, well, then you do what you do for other inmates that are at risk at all-male prisons, like you do for pedophiles, you keep them isolated if they want to be isolated. Um, we, we, we know that there are, there are ways to deal with vulnerable inmates that are not making other people vulnerable. That's not moral. You can't just say, well, this person will be vulnerable in this prison, so we're going to put him in this other one and make all these different women vulnerable. That's not moral. It's, it's cowardice. It's political cowardice. And we ought to be willing to label it for what it is. If you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, share it with your friends. I've got links in the description down below that can help you to support me in different ways. Thank you.